Okay, well, I went to Home Depot and I got these uh, quarter inch bolts that will be used to bolt this down to the table. And um, they're three and a half inches long, which is a little bit more than we need. And we're going to be welding the nut on, on top of a, a hole that will drill in the, the base of the unit. So that will sit there and then the bolt will thread down into it so we can tighten it down good and tight. Um, and that should uh, work real nice and it's um, going to be a lot uh, more useful of a machine. Okay, so we have four bolt holes and we're going to just measure approximate um, distance between the centers of the holes and it looks like about 17 and a half inches. And this one is approximately 10 and a quarter inches. And we're going to be using one and a half inch square steel tubing. And we'll line it up so that the uh, the rubber feet on this are under it. And I think we're going to go with a, an H-shaped frame since we don't really need to um, put a bar across each side. We can just have one in the middle and um, then have the, the long beam going out from that. Okay, so let's uh, measure the outside, which will be the size that will cut the piece to. That looks like 20. And then this piece will be uh, 13, let's say. Okay, so we're going to have two pieces of inch and a half spaced out by piece in the middle. And it's going to be 13 inches wide, so we have to subtract inch and a half from each side. And then we'll lift in the uh, the size for the middle piece, which will be 10 inches. Um, okay, so we basically have all the dimensions for the parts that we need to cut right now. Um, now, depending on what the maximum size part you're going to cut um, practically, um, I'd probably go with 8 feet. Okay, and for the beam that runs across, um, I'm just kind of designing this as I go. I don't really do scripts or anything like that. And, um, this is just a, a simple project that you can get away with doing as you go. Um, so we'll have the, the base for the table, the H frame base, will be bolted down to the um, saw. And then for the arm that extends out um, about eight feet, we'll weld it to this piece and then We'll have to say that this piece can be bolted to these so it can be removed um, in case you ever have to move it. That way you have separate pieces instead of big long pieces with weird shaped things hanging on the end that are hard to fit in vehicles. Okay, and I think for the actual stop block mechanism, the easiest way to do it would be to cut a piece of a small piece of angle iron that will ride on top of the, um, the long beam and weld a, uh, a square piece to it so that you can slide it um, nice and easy against the main beam. And then probably get one of these cheap um, Harbor Freight clamps. Now the only thing I advise buying from Harbor Freight are things that are basically impossible to screw up like hammers, um, C-clamps, and these little things. Now, if you try to buy one of these from Home Depot, it'd be like $15, but you can get one from Harbor Freight for $3. And we're going to be cutting it up and reusing it in this project to actually hold the clamp, um, the stop plate in place. So we'll be sliding around on the angle iron, this piece welded to it, and this will get cut off short so that, um, and probably put a screw through that into the angle so that stays fixed to it. So that will travel and you don't have to worry about it um, falling off or getting lost or anything like that. 
and then to tighten it down, you just squeeze it a few times until it locks up, and then that won't go anywhere. You can just slide your metal right up against it. Now, because uh, what we're going to be cutting is going to be in all different sizes and widths, I think what I'm going to do is make a little uh, like square rectangular piece and put like one bolt through so it can kind of swivel to whatever position you might need. Um, and that way if you're cutting something down on this end of the saw, it will uh, be able to still stop it and then you can just uh, swing it out of the way if you um, need to do something else quick without actually changing your settings. That's uh, one of the things that um, really screws up long-term accuracy is if you have to change the settings back and forth, back and forth. And we can also either uh, put a, uh, basically like a, a miter scale on there. Okay, now I'm just going to make a, a part cut list so that I uh, don't waste any material on uh, making the wrong size parts. We need two pieces. 20 inches long, we need one piece 10 inches long. I'm going to recycle this piece I already had left over from another project for the mount for the long beam. And then we need one piece 8 feet long. And I think this will probably also do for the vertical. And then we just need a probably like a, a 6 inch piece of angle iron. Okay, well, let's uh, go set the uh, saw back up and cut these parts up. Okay, well, this is our cutting area, and I'm just going to be essentially designing this thing to be on the floor because, for me, that's going to be most useful. Um, if you have um, it up on a table, then you could put, like, rollers um, down here so you could help feed metal to it. But for my purposes, I'm just going to be cutting mostly... Um, two inch square tubing and smaller. So the floor will work perfect and I'm gonna have a, a metal rack back here so I can just pop a piece down, slide it through the saw, set the, uh, the stop to the size I need and cut away. Okay, now this is extremely loud and produces a lot of sparks. So what you wanna do is wear safety goggles and earmuffs. Earmuffs are very important whenever you're doing uh, metal fabrication. Because if you don't wear earmuffs, eventually you will pretty much be deaf. So for tonight we're just going to be cutting up these uh, scrap pieces. They're leftovers from previous projects. So I mark the sizes I need. We'll just be basically making one cut per piece and um, just saving the scrap from them for more future projects. The, uh, the square steel tubing is really so versatile because I mean you can pretty much reuse every little bit of scrap and never have to waste anything. So now we're just going to set our table zero degree angle. Okay, we've got uh, these four parts cut up and uh, ready to go.